So we're getting close to releasing GoKit, and we wanted to uh, show off some of the stuff that's going to be going into it. Uh, over this weekend, we actually added a visual path editor that, uh, that lets you use the Unity editor to create paths, and then you can save them to disk so that you can reuse them. And uh, you know, at any time you want to use the path, you can just go ahead and stick it in animation and get going. So uh, just uh, we're going to just do a quick demo of it. So this is uh, basically a cube sitting here, and we've already set up a path on it. So we have uh, all these different playback commands, and these are available for everything in GoKit. Uh, we're not going to go too much into the details of it. This is just going to be more to demo uh, how you would set up a path, just so you can see uh, how quick and easy it is. So uh, we can do a play forward here, so you can see the cube going around. You can reverse it at any point in time, back and forth. And that's all good and well. Let's have a look at the editor. Okay, so in scene view, what you have here is uh, is our path editor. So the way you make paths is you just stick the go dummy path script onto the path maker and uh, onto a game object, and you get the neat little editor over here. So when you're done with it, you just delete that game object. You don't need it in your scene. It's only required so that the editor scripts work here. So you can see it's just a you know basic 3D path here. Uh, you can choose to have your uh, use these little circles for your for the handles, or if you you prefer the standard Unity handles, you can just click that button and get these for uh, you know finer grain control. Um, I personally find these to be a little bit too busy, so uh, that's why the little circle controls were added here. And you can see you can drag stuff around and if you want to make new nodes you just double click and you can create your path and if you want to delete nodes you can just press delete exactly as you'd expect. Um, some of the neat things up in, in here are uh, it has snapping so while you're dragging you hold down the command key it'll snap in, in uh, un five unit increments and if you want to connect two node elements, like for instance if we wanted to close this path, if while you're dragging you hold the control key down, once you get close enough you'll see any nodes that you can get close enough to will, will turn red and if you uh, you can drag it in there and if you want to you can snap it to it so that it closes it. Now another neat little thing here is if you want to close the path you just click close path and now you have a completed path. And if you want to unclose it you can just do Command or Control Z, and it has full undo support built into it. So uh, let's just do a, a quick little check here. We're going to move some stuff around in here. Maybe uh, you, you can insert nodes. So say you wanted to insert something at node three, you just click there, and you get a new node in here, and you can move it around. Move this stuff around. So let's say we like our node here, or I like our path. So we just click save, and we're just going to save it as demo route. And you want to save these in the resources folder because these are actually uh, just going to be uh, like binary versions of your path so that at runtime they can be loaded. And we'll replace that. So let's go back over to game view and we're just going to press play. And when we go to actually play this, you're going to notice that the cube kind of jumped there. So um, that's actually because uh, right now the animation isn't actually starting at the origin. So if we jump back over here and you see there's a button here, Shift Path to Start at Origin. And what this will do is, is it'll take the entire path and translate it so that the first node starts at 0, 0, 0. So let's go ahead and save it when we do that. And that's all in good, well and good, but why would we want to do that? And the reason we would want to do something like this is because when we actually go to... Uh, to, to play this, we can choose to set it as a relative path or an absolute path. And that's what the second parameter is here. So you can see that is relative lets you select true. So the reason we would want to do something like this is we can create a path animation that starts at the origin and you can then play it on any object, anytime, anywhere in your scene, and it'll actually play it relatively. So it'll actually play it the way you would expect it to. So you'll notice when we go to play this now, and uh, when I press play forward, you'll see that it, it'll actually start, the path will start right from here. And around it goes. So now you can see we have that jump right over the, at the end here, where it jumps from here over to here. 
And uh, that's something also that in the path maker we can fix really easily. So in scene view, so we have this, this gap here. So let's say we don't really like that. So we can go over here and just close the path. And now when we save it and go to play it, when it completes a loop and starts the next one, it's going to now be smooth transition. It'll just go straight through. You don't even notice. All right. So one other thing I want to show you on here. So let's say you made your your entire path here. You notice there's arrows that appear in here. So if, if any segment's long enough to show an arrow, it'll pop in there so that you can see what direction your path is actually going. So uh, let's just say we have it set up and it's going something like this, but we just realized we made the entire path backwards. So that's what this reverse path button will do. So you can click it and you'll notice now it reverses. So whenever you reverse a path, you'll also want to make sure that you shift so that it starts at origin again. So now we can save this. And when we go to play, you can see that it smoothly started. Of course, it jumps off screen because it's going at the camera now and behind it, but that's okay. All right. That's it for now. We'll have uh, GoKit released. Hopefully, if all goes well and we get the documentation done, we'll have, uh, we'll have it pushed to GitHub this week.